What is the pressure at the bottom of the lake? This is one of my favorite exercises to do in class because typically what I do in class is I tell students in a static fluid, pressure only depends on altitude. And everybody looks at me like, yeah, of course, we know this, we've seen it before. And then you give out this exercise in class and see so many of, uh, of the students um, struggle with uh, the cosine of the angle right there. Uh, is it cosine or sine of 30 degrees? And how do I calculate the length there and so on and so forth? Well, the answer is, of course, uh, four bars. It's very easy to calculate. Uh, so let me show you how to, how to solve this problem. You have uh, the water surface on top, yes? And then you have uh, your point, which is down there. And this point is at a distance away from the, from the top, which is measured with a coordinate z. And at the same time, uh, you have g, gravity, which is pushing downwards. Um, what we have in static fluid is that um, grad p is rho g. So the gradient of, I'm sorry, the gradient of pressure, let me erase this, the gradient of pressure, grad p, is rho g, like this. Uh, the change in space of pressure is equal to density times gravity. Um, and if g here is aligned with z, then you can just take this 3D equation and have it in only one direction. And this becomes here dp over dz is rho g, like so. If dp dz is rho g, then you can integrate and say then p is rho g z uh, plus whatever value you start at, at, at z is equal to zero. So we call this p zero here. So if you have here at uh, z starting at the water surface, at the water surface you have p atmospheric. This is p atm here. And at this point here, you will have uh, this p atm, p zero here, plus density times gravity times whatever the distance away from, from the top is. So if you apply at a point uh, which is uh, shown just below here, uh, 30 meters down um, inside water, then you take uh, data for water, uh, 10 to the power 3 kilograms per meter cube, uh, multiply by g, which is almost 10, 9.81, I'm sorry, 9.81 uh, times the z value, which is in this case 30, 30. Um, and then you add uh, pressure atmospheric, which is one bar, which turns out to be 10 to the power 5 pascals. Um, and this, I can move to have a little space. If you calculate this, it uh, gets you um, precisely um, 3.94, 3.94 times 10 to the power 5 pascals. Yes. And uh, we convert this into bar, usually as engineers. And this is, of course, I'm sorry, I wrote this poorly. This should have been a three, three here. This is a three, like so. Uh, 3.94 bar of pressure at the bottom of the, of the lake here. And the rule of thumb is that pressure inside static water increases by about 0 0.1 bar um, per meter. So 10 meters is one bar, 30 meters is one, is, is three bars, more than the starting pressure. Um, so here you go. Uh, this is a very simple problem, and this is how you calculate pressure at the bottom of any recipient. Let me take the opportunity to add a few more remarks um, with what this problem actually means and what, it, what it's meant to um, trigger as thoughts. Uh, let's say you have the water surface over here. Um, let me keep it wavy like this, and you're at this point here, uh, just to be clear the side walls that you may have on the side here do not affect the pressure at this point in any way as long as the water is static yes um, and so this is true for this wall but it's also true for this wall like so you can make a wall like this yes pressure here will still be rho gz yes and you may even uh, take uh, the atlantic ocean uh, on the side and have huge lengths to, towards the right it does not affect the height you may even take here um, a little space to put a boat, uh, maybe a 30,000 ton boat on top of this, uh, as long as uh, the flow is uh, zero, so the water is static, the pressure at this point uh, will not change, it remains the same, just depends on the altitude. Uh, so here you go, so this is how you, you calculate pressure um, depending on depth inside the static fluid.